Hey guys, Patrick with Answers to the ACS. Most of you have probably memorized your VFR minimums by now. IFR in Class A airspace, three miles clear of clouds in Class B airspace, three 152 in Class C, D, and E below 10,000 airspace, five 111 in Class E above 10,000 airspace, and anywhere from one mile clear of clouds to five 111 in Class G airspace. But have you ever wondered why they are what they are? This is something you need to know for your check ride because many examiners are not happy with rope memorization anymore. This addresses PAIEK1 in the private pilot airplane ACS and the equivalent element in the commercial pilot airplane ACS. Class A airspace is IFR only, not because of navigation like most people think, but because sea and avoid is impossible. This is due to the high speeds that aircraft fly at these altitudes. A slew of mid-air collisions in the 1950s prompted the FAA to establish positive control airspace starting at 24,000 feet across the U.S., going down to 17,000 feet over select routes. Over time, this evolved into today's Class A airspace, starting at 18,000 feet. Class B airspace has reduced VFR minimums of three statue miles in clear clouds. Similar to Class A airspace, this is because aircraft are under positive radar control by ATC. In addition to this, VFR aircraft must receive a clearance to enter Class B airspace, which will contain the, the phrase, cleared into Bravo airspace. Last but not least, ATC does not want aircraft deviating for clouds unless absolutely necessary. This was made clear in an amendment to Part 91 back in 1991. Class C, D, and E below 10,000 feet airspace has what some consider to be standard VFR minimums at three statute miles, 1,000 above 500 below, and 2,000 feet horizontally from, cl from clouds. But where do these numbers come from? Let's start with visibility. Recall that the speed limit in this airspace is 250 knots. If two aircraft are approaching head-on at 250 knots and they see each other at exactly three statute miles, they will have 21.6 seconds before impact. Referencing AC 90-48, research shows that the average reaction time is 12.5 seconds. 21.6 seconds puts us at just under twice this number. What about cloud clearances? Distance below clouds is the lowest at 500 feet, distance above clouds is double to 1,000 feet, and distance horizontally from clouds is doubled again to 2,000 feet. If you sit in a typical cockpit, you'll notice that it's way easier to see above you than below you. This is why the distance below clouds is half of the distance above clouds. The horizontal distance is the greatest simply because aircraft travel forward a lot faster than they climb or descend. Class E airspace above 10,000 feet has increased VFR minimums of 5 statute miles and 1,000 above, 1,000 below, and 1 statute mile horizontally from clouds. Why is this? Well, the speed limit of 250 knots is removed. However, that doesn't mean that airspeeds are unlimited. VMO of most jets uh, hovers around 320 to 350 knots. Let's take 350 knots. If two airplanes are converging head-on at 350 knots and they see each other at exactly five statute miles, they will have 25.7 seconds before impact. Just about twice the average reaction time of 12.5 seconds. What about the thousand above, thousand below, and one statute mile horizontally from clouds? This also accommodates the higher speeds that these aircraft fly at, uh, as well as their higher climb and descent rates. Class G airspace has the most complex VFR weather minimums because we're slumming it down real low and slow. There are basically four levels of VFR minimums in Class G airspace. One mile clear of clouds, this applies during the day below 1200 AGL. One 152, this applies between 1200 AGL and 10,000 MSL during the day. Three 152, this applies below 10,000 MSL at night. And five 111, which applies day or night above 1200 AGL and above 10,000 MSL. In general, VFR minimums increase the higher you go because aircraft start traveling faster. VFR minimums at night are increased because it's harder to see at night. Last but not least, Class G minimums above 10,000 feet match that of Class E airspace because of the removal of the 250 knot speed limit. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe so you can see more videos like this. Until next time, fly safe.